tutorial on how to use Comic Life 3. I am doing it on a Mac. I don't know how different the PC version is. You'll always want to do the blank with styles. Uh, the blank without will not give you the cool stuff. Um, I do not use scripts. I think that has to do with um, the comic books, and I do not make comic books, um, so I ignore that. There are templates you can start with. I honestly never use any of these templates, although I suppose you could open one of these and um, edit it, and it could save you some time. Might be fun uh, for learning, um, but I always start right out with a blank one and start with blank with style. So I'm going to open up one of these. And I'm going to make this uh, full screen um, with my recording window. Now, the first thing you'll do, it always opens up to letter, is if you go to File, and sorry it's not showing all this, but you go to Page Setup. This is pretty powerful in here, is where you can choose uh, tabloid, um, our church printer prints tabloids. I use this a lot for um, my posters. Um, you can also go up here. I know it's off the video, but if you go to file page setup um, for your screen um, I do video 16.9 and it will give you um, you know obviously landscape 16.9 you can there's several different options in the page setup sometimes even just with your paper sizes letter you're just gonna want um, landscape um, instead of um, the the letter type page setup so there's a couple different options in here. There's a whole bunch. Those are the ones I use um, the most. Um, so let's stick with the 16.9. And um, then you can zoom in and out. Um, and uh, Fit puts it on the screen. I actually like it zoomed out um, slightly so that I can see the edges. It's also sometimes hard to see above. Over here on this little arrow is where you can duplicate a page or add a blank page. I usually immediately add two blank pages and I always work on the middle one. And the reason is I just like to have this margin above and below so that I can really see where the edge of the screen is. Um, down here you have a couple of different features. Obviously with comic books you have all these cool little blanks. Um, for your cool text you dra drag one of these up and this is where you can um, do your cool words you can stretch it all different sizes um, and put it in there and then you double click on it and you do your name um, and then you click outside and there it is it's annoying to me that if you do it bigger it always makes it really big and you always have to resize it that's kind of a pain in their older versions if you had it this side and you replaced it with pneumonia ultra microscopic sulcovacano kinesis it would stick it in that same size in this case, if you replace that text with more text, it'll make it huge and you'll have to just um, drag and drop and resize. So all these corners um, are pretty obvious where you, where you can resize it um, by grabbing the corners. Uh, centers obviously do it this way. Corners do both. Edges do this. This should be pretty obvious. This circle up here is how you do uh, rotating. But here's the cool feature. If you click on it again, just a single click, these turn red. And this is where you can begin to have a little more fun with uh, resizing it um, and getting a little more funky um, with your resizing and make things word around. You can also change the fonts. Um, up here are a bunch of styles. I, I scroll through these and I'll pick one of these, but often I don't stick with these because people will recognize it's Comic Life. So I kind of pick one close, and then if you click this inspector over here, this box appears, and this is where you get lots of options. You can pick some um, fun um, patterns uh, to put inside. Um, there's just a zillion things where you just experiment with what you want to put inside. They have some that are pre-made, um, and you just have fun picking them. Uh, that's a color. You can literally put an image in there. Um, you can do tinted, um, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, half tones. Then you're literally going over here and saying, I want this color and this color. So you, you can spend a lot of time on it. Let's just stick with a solid color for now. And I'm going to go to red. 
then the stroke is the outline um, and you can turn that off or on there's tons of different strokes that you can do um, you can decide how thick you want it you can even do multiple outlines then the colored outlines you can have fun with it you can do compact uncompact you can do shadow no shadow you can decide how big the shadow is going to be the color of the shadow i'm trying and then which direction the shadow goes so i'm trying to go fast here because there's so many things you can do opacity is how see-through it is if you want the background to show if you just click on the page this style up here is the background and uh, so you can actually change to, um, they give you a couple pre-selected backgrounds that shadows too far away I'm gonna move the shadow up um, then you can also do the same thing with these backgrounds where if you just want to do um, change your background colorized image um, or a solid color background um, lots of fun things you can do so I'm gonna do yellow background um, and same thing opacity um, oh I had to click something else so anyway um, let's go back to the image um, half tone scale to fill okay I'm gonna get I'm gonna go back up here and just get rid of that so anyway you can have a lot of fun with the background so that's all just with the lettering feature the text feature when you drag this up obviously it's made to look like um, uh, it was a dark and stormy night so it's designed to be a, for a comic book text same thing you can redirect it um, it defaults to having a box and being a white box you can have it not be filled which is what I do a lot not have a box around it you can have a box around it and actually change the shape of it by going in here and saying I actually want it to be an oval I want it to be an inset square I want it to be twisted all kinds of things lots of you can click through all of these I mean you really can have a lot of fun um, I often take that off I can double select it and hit fonts up here and this is where you can change it to a normal font um, double click it to highlight it change your font and this is a lot like normal text boxing I probably don't have to spend too much time on that um, but you can have a lot of fun with all your different fonts digital these are all the fonts for my next series that I'm doing that's a I downloaded a bunch of fonts for the power up series that I'm doing so I have a bunch of fonts that are digital so I always make groups for my fonts like the ninja series oh you have to highlight the text my ninja series um, so anyway you'll see some of my past groups that I did so that's that um, for images let me reduce this and put this over here put this over here um, for images there's a variety of ways that you can do um, images you bring these boxes up and again it will default like this and if you want to bring an image in uh, good image. let's use this guy if I just drag an image into here um, it will pop it in there I can resize the box that the image is in uh, or I can double click on it and I can resize the image as it's inside of there um, and this can be helpful um, for placing images um, especially something that's going to be replaced a lot um, so I'll put this guy here because if in the future I'm going to redo a poster and I want to put a different image in there um, I'll move this guy in there it'll ask me do I want to replace the image or add it I usually am replacing the image and I see that I'm cutting the image off so I'm going to uh, make this square bigger how do I do that I don't use this a lot um, what I tend to do with images is just drag them directly in here and not not use that box so there's different ways you can do images why is it not letting me move it you can arrow it around there it is and you can resize it re rotate it um, and then there's back and front features so I want to put the image behind I hit back I can stack features images so you can do that you can do text boxes you can hi I'm Carl 
you can do these. You can drag this around. You can drag the middle around. They tend to put way too much margin on these text boxes. So I actually tend to just do space and do a text box like this. Hi, I'm Carl. I take this. I get rid of the fill. I get rid of the stroke. And I tend to just put a text box over it um, because I can resize it and go to my font box over here and I can actually make it a little bigger. Uh, it won't let me do that the other way. So that's um, a basic overview um, of ways that you can do some different things. Now, what's nice is if you if I duplicate this, because I'm gonna make a minor change, um, then I can come in here and change some basic stuff. So I'm trying to think what else is helpful to know. Let me see what some of my recent ones are. Um, you can lock objects. Here's a video, a game that I made um, for the next series. Um, there's, oh, these are guides. You can drag down from the top guide. So I, I made guides for the middle and I made guides for, so I could center these cards. I brought in these objects. And once I made the template, let me go down to the bottom. Once I made this card, um, oh, exporting. That's a good thing to show you. I actually exported um, to images and you can choose different resolutions and what pages. I actually exported, because this is a bunch of um, images, I actually exported the whole page. So at the backdrop, I could import the backdrop and not worry about bumping these individual cards. The backdrop is all a single image that I constructed here, you know, like this little copyright notice. And now you can also lock items. So once I had all these little boats in the right place, you could actually highlight them and go to um, arrange and then hit lock and you can lock those images so they don't move around so for example if I wanted to make sure these animals didn't move I would hold down shift highlight all these animals and once they're all this 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 file is actually done I would go to arrange which you can't see up there and I would lock those images and now that they're locked I can't accidentally move it if I wanted to move it I would unlock it I don't use lock a lot unless I'm going to be duplicating a page and I want to make sure that things don't move. Like, for example, I made a memory verse. Um, let's see if that's in here. Um, the verse learn. So when I make um, a memory verse slide where the verses are going to get covered up, let me move this down. I make the first verse slide. I duplicate it, add a symbol, duplicate it, add a symbol, and I just keep duplicating and adding another thing so that, let me get this out of the way, so that um, I basically don't have to redo all the work and then I've got the verse just keeps getting covered up. So instead of doing all that work over and over again, I just keep adding symbols. When I'm all done, I'm gonna export to images and I choose a, a higher quality. And if you do a bunch of images, um, it will export them to a folder. It'll actually automatically put them in a folder. If you export to a PDF, um, it'll create a PDF that's multiple pages. If you want them as one page, just export them one at a time. Um, I mostly export PDFs and images. I suppose you can do photos. I don't know the difference. Um, looks like there's some other options. So that's exporting I use a lot. Um, Oh, there's all kinds of things you can do. So anyway, play around with it. The more you use it, the more fun um, you will have with it. Um, I use that. That's the inspector. I use the fonts. Um, and they appear, disappear, styles, new pages. I think that's a lot. Um, and that's a, there is a menu over here that goes into your um, I photo I don't use this I don't even know where it's pulling these from it looks like it's my I calendar or my I photo library um, but I don't I don't use it for that so I think I can actually move that over but anyway I'm gonna end this before it gets too long and hopefully this tutorial and there's window up here that you can switch between um, different programs um, save often um, I do save and if you go to my unit three, I have a folder called Comic Life Files. I save everything in here, and I'm going to name this Tutorial.
and always save it will crash every now and then it will freeze every now and then so save 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 and every time I open a new file uh, one of the things that I do a lot is anytime I go back to a project um, I will often copy and paste it and um, do a version 2 a version 3 looks like I didn't do it a lot on there but you'll see that in my lessons a lot and I'll throw the old ones in an archive file that way if anything ever goes bad I can go back to the last version okay let me know if you have any questions hope this is helpful